welcome to the session i hope you guys are doing good it's been a long time since we have last met and i totally understand it due to some health issues i was not able to upload any videos in the recent days sorry for that but anyways i'm back with the bang now so we are going to start off with something very helpful something very interesting something that you can use for the next couple of days to help you ace that examinations your physics examination in particular for your term to ex uh, for your term to right so yes a very warm welcome my name is anup and this is vidantu 9th and 10th english channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure you subscribe because we have a lot of amazing content coming your way and i'm pretty sure you guys don't want to miss that out and also hit the like button if you guys have been enjoying the session so far right so anyways what we're going to talk about is basically the 60 day strategy for term 2 examination now let me tell you be uh, let me be very frank with you guys we have not gotten any official word from cbse board as to when the exam is going to happen but nonetheless you can expect the exam to start in the month of march april something uh, you know around that time so keeping that in mind this strategy has been laid out for you guys now we will uh, once the official word comes out then we will give you a better well planned strategy as well something that you, that you can use uh, with concrete evidence that yeah this is something that is definitely going to work for you right so first of all first thing that you need to know is people you need to know what is your syllabus for physics right you have two chapters in uh, physics one is electricity and the other is magnetic effect of electric current now in these two chapters be sure to understand couple of things that you know, you know that is uh, the type of numericals that you can expect from these chapters what are the theory that has been stressed uh, on uh, in the past couple of years and uh, also make sure that you uh, remember all the formulas that is coming from these chapters right so make sure you make a list of all of those that is bo both for electricity as well as magnetic effect of electric current also uh, you know please keep that in mind guys that major of the numericals would be coming from current electricity not from magnetic effect of electric current because you don't pretty much there is little to no numericals at all there are a lot of you know uh, you know symbols that is you know right and thumb rule uh, not you know the hand rules and all that that is what you generally have from magnetic effect of electric current apart from that working of motors and all that but other than that it's more theory and less numerical so it's for all those who find math a little hard magnetic effect is something that you can asn and current electricity something you should put in a little bit effort on now the second thing you should know is know your dates right when is the exams going to start now again guys let me be very honest there is no official word from cbc yet as soon as the uh, official uh, date sheet is out we'll be the first to let you guys know for now we're going to uh, go under the assumption that the exam is going to start in the month of march april so this is mid mid jan so you basically have a good 2 to 2 2 to 3 months left 2 to 2 and a half to 2 3 3 months left 2 uh, to and half to 3 months left for your exams to start so you have a good amount of time left so do not waste this time don't uh, you know don't just throw it away this is the time that you utilize it properly in order to ace your exams because i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys here watching this video at this point of time still have this regret that you could not do good in your term one examination and the major reason as to why that happened is because you took it too lightly right a lot of you guys would have started your preparations a little late and then you started then everything became a little too much and you were not able to cope up with uh, you know everything that is going on around you so do not make the same mistake over here because again i'm telling you guys you are the only batch or getting a chance to overwrite whatever you have done right whatever mistakes you have done in your past board examination you can get you are getting a chance to rewrite history again so do not waste that opportunity do not let that go in vain right because the the feeling that you have right now for term 1 don't have the same thing for term 2 as well so please start your preparations right away right so no the second the third thing that you should know is guys what is your exam pattern like like what are the type of questions that you can expect uh in your term 2 examination so to be honest guys you will have short answer type questions which would be for you know a one to two mark you also have long answer type questions which could range from two to three marks or three to four marks and then you have very long answer type questions as well which would be basically five marks uh you know uh, around 5 marks 4 to 5 marks is the range of those kind of questions so these are the three type of questions that you can expect short answers long answers and very very long answer type questions as well now here again the weightage would vary between 2 to 5 marks so you don't have much of one mark question so you basically would have between 2 to 5 marks so you need to prepare and more importantly know how to answer the questions according to the marks given so for example if you are uh, you know if you are asked about ohms law and 
asks for a three mark uh, it, it's asked for three mark you cannot just say, say that ohm's law states that uh, you know uh, current is directly proportional to potential difference you can't do that you have to write down the formula you need to write down the unit everything has to be mentioned so according to the you know, marks according to the weightage you need to be able to answer the questions as well and for that you need to practice and how do you practice again this is what we're going to talk about right now how do you utilize these next 60 days to answer those type of questions and to utilize your time to the maximum extent so that you can you know you can be very confident when it comes to physics now i i know that physics is not the only subject you have a lot of other subjects as well so this plan is according to that now some of you guys might study for five hours a day some of you guys are very studious and go up to eight hours a day some of you guys like don't even sleep they go for 16 hours a day like you know like uh, beautiful beautiful vampires right 16 hours 20 hours a day now if you are someone who falls in that category please take care of your health because if you keep on doing 16 hours 16 hours every day if you're not getting enough sleep that could lead to negative impacts later on so keep that in mind as well so this strategy is laid out for those people who study for five to six hours a day to you know facilitate all the other subjects including physics it's not just physics oriented it's going to be related to all the other subjects as well so here's what you have to do so the next 60 days assume that your exams are going to start in the month of march right so the next 60 days i want you guys to divide the uh, you know it into two first would be the first 40 days and the last 40 days last 20 days the first 40 days i want you guys to focus on your preparations both your electricity current electricity as well as magnetic effect of electric current the last 20 days has to be reserved only for revision now again this is if you start your preparations right now now if this if you decide that no sir i just want to chill right now because i'm in 10th i am the senior of my school I want to, you know, uh, give my uh, juniors a run for their money. If that is your intention, then this this ratio would change a little, and obviously the number of days would also change. But I would I would strongly urge you guys to start your preparations right away because that is going to help. That is going to definitely help you boost your score, and you'll be more confident. And you'll be more relaxed when it comes to your term to examination rather than you know running around looking for notes and looking for uh, did you study this? Did you study that? why why do you want all of that right like in the last minute i'm pretty sure in term one also you were running around in your uh the last five minutes you've been you've been running around in your school corridor asking did you study that did you do you know which which important question is that don't do that don't do that to yourself because that is not something that anyone wants to be in i'm pretty sure none of you guys want to be in that situation but it happens so if you don't want that you need to start putting in your efforts right now so that you don't have to you know you don't get into that situation once again right so here's what you do guys the 40 day preparations the 40 days that is meant for preparation how do you utilize it really well so first thing you need to do is you need to keep at least two hours per day for physics now that two hours can be 30 minutes 30 minutes 30 minutes 30 minutes or it can be one hour in the morning one hour in the evening or if you're super awesome you can sit for two hours straight and finish off your physics but whatever it is you need to spend at least two hours per day for physics so that means that you'll have time for other subjects also you'll have you know uh, you can spend two hours on chemistry two hours on biology and if you want to spend uh, you know a couple of hours on math and uh, social science that is also possible right you can adjust that accordingly but yes Roughly about one and a half to two hours is what is ideal for your preparations and if you're standing up preparations right now. If it is later, then it's going to become from two to three hours or four hours a day. So rather, I would say start your preparations right now itself. Two hours per day is something that you can easily manage. So what you do, guys, is very simple. The first two days, the one and the first and the second day, let's say you're starting your preparations from today. So today and tomorrow, make sure you read your NCRT. This is your... I keep saying this and I'm going to say this until the day I am done teaching. Your NCRT is like your Bible, your Quran, your Bhagavad Gita, whatever whatever religion you follow. It is your it is your bread and butter. So do not do not ignore it. Make sure you read your NCRT. Make sure you make notes on whatever you read. That is going to save you a lot of time towards the end of the exam. And it's also going to help you boost your memory as well. Because the more you write, the better chance you have of remembering, remembering that stuff as well. Write in your own words. Write in simple words. You don't have to write like pages and pages of notes together. One or two lines or explaining the same concept would absolutely be fantastic. And it's going to go a long way, right? So day one and day two, make sure you read your NCRT. 
day three and day four make sure you practice your ncrt exemplar questions and in text questions so two days for that two days to read your ncrt which you can easily do for electricity it's not that big of a chapter around so you can do it two days two uh, that is four hours basically you're spending for that four hours to read your ncrt four hours to practice some index questions and exemplar questions the fifth day start practicing your short answers long answers and very long answers and also from your uh you know try to take out some questions from your pre previous year question papers as well so try to take out some you know the past 10 years question papers if you go through you'll find lots of questions related to electricity alone so pick out those questions practice those questions for on the fifth day because the more you practice the better you get at it sixth day take your mock test mock test has to comprise of questions which are basically you can find lots of on the uh, lots on the internet itself <clears throat> If you just look it up, you can find lots of mock test papers on internet. But if you're too lazy to do that also, then you can just take up any of the past year question papers and try to solve the questions from electricity chapter alone. So this is one way to do it. If you're too lazy, if you have, you already have a soft copy of your previous year question papers, then you can do that as well. But this is how you should be approaching for electricity, especially when it comes to electricity. Six days, you're done with electricity. That's it. Six days and you're good to go. Day one and day two, read your NCRT. Day three and day four, make sure you read your ncrt and practice the questions that are there in text as well as exemplar questions that is tech questions given at the back of the textbook or back of the chapter day five practice your pyqs the previous year question papers and day six take mock test papers all right so make sure this is one this is one way you can do it now talking about magnetic effect of electric current you'll follow the same pretty much the same kind of uh, you know approach over here as well one in two days first and the second day that is after you complete electricity the first and the second day you would do the same thing as before read your ncrt make sure you make notes on whatever you read as well that is something which is going to go a long way again i'm going to tell you this people ncrt is your is your bread and butter so do not ignore it read it very thoroughly day three and day four again practice your index questions and exemplar question day five previous question papers for short answers long answers and very long answers especially over here you'll have a lot of long answers questions that is especially your hand rules and all here again you'll have numericals mostly the very long answers and all that but here you'll have uh, working of motor and hand rules these are the very long answers which is a short short question so please 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 practice a lot of that i mean make sure you you spend a lot of time on that as well and day six again take mock test papers now once you're done with this then what do you do for the next 20 days is what your question i am pretty sure a lot of you guys might be wondering that the next 20 days guys again practice it's all about practice after that again two hours a day you need to practice the numericals and keep revising whatever you have learned keep revising keep revising because there are only two chapters there's nothing much to do it's only the two chapters so keep revising and these 40 days that you are spending for it in fact would actually you'd be actually able to complete your first cycle of revision over here itself one to two cycles of revision you would be able to uh you know uh what to say uh finish off over here itself. so make sure you do you plan such a way that you're able to complete at least one cycle of revision on the first 40 days the last 20 days again you can solely focus on your revision solely focus on the you know the uh, practice more and more practicing you know more and more mock test papers more and more previous year question papers more and more uh index questions so keep practicing but you should make sure that at least you're completing the first cycle of revision within that 40 days so that you're well prepared you're more confident when it comes to physics especially uh, electricity and magnetic effect of electric current and if everything else fails guys if everything else fails and you feel like you're drowning uh, because of all the stress that you have around you please don't feel bad to ask help it's perfectly fine because here's the thing guys sometimes asking for help is the bravest move you can make and you don't have to do it alone right that, this is something that uh, you know that you need to understand there's no there's no shame in asking for help be it your friend be it your neighbor be it your parents be it your uh, cousin be it your brother or sister whoever it is there is no shame in asking for help every one of us have been through it you need someone to 
you know hand hold you at times you need someone to push you you need someone to give you that nudge to help you cross that line you know this reminds me of a small story again i know these days i talk about a lot of stories but yes this is one story that i was you know i was just reading the other day so there was this kid all right this kid there was a very you know very young little kid and you know kids right kids are always doing something or the other so there was this rock in front of the kid and this kid is trying to you know lift this rock up and he's doing everything that he can he's putting his 100 percent but the rock is not moving an inch right and he's doing everything he can he's like sweating he's like trying to lift it up you know putting all his effort and his dad was basically sitting in the back and watching this kid try right and he's trying again and again failing again and again he's failing so his dad asked this question that are you doing everything that you can i mean are you putting your 100 percent to lift the stone up and the kid was like yeah yeah i am doing everything i can then the dad said this one statement no you're not because you know why i'm sitting right there you could have just asked for my help right and that is the fact of life people i know it's a very simple story but yes this is the fact of life there's no need for you to uh, you know show that you're brave you're you're super strong you don't need anyone there's no there's no need for that right now what you need what you require is to score good marks right and in order to do that whatever help you can get make use of it be it youtube be it anything else for that matter make use of it and push yourself nudge yourself to get to the finish line that is what i want to say right and yes we are also always here for you guys vedantu sessions are always here for you guys to help you uh, with your preparations for your term to examinations we are always here we'll give our 100% to make sure that you guys are getting the best and nothing but the best if you want to know more about vedantu the link is in the description you can check it out for yourself the link would be somewhere over here i'll just show that link very quickly so this is one of the videos that is that went on like that uh, you know that was put up a couple of days ago so you can check over here guys cbse term 2 full syllabus you can check click on this link and see for yourself how and what you're getting out of vedantu and then yes again as i said before there's no shame in asking for help we are also here to help you guys out there's no need for you to be alone a lot of people are you know lakhs and lakhs of students are writing the exam so you're not alone don't ever feel alone and there are a lot of teachers out there to help you guys out all you need to do is this reach out ask for help and none of us would ever say no right we'll never say no to that we will always be there for you guys no matter what right guys so that's it that is all for today I hope this session helped. I hope uh, this was, uh, you know, for all those who've been thinking for a long time to start your preparations, I hope that this is something that can help you in the right direction, to nudge you in the right direction, to, uh, you know, to start, to kickstart your preparations right away so that you don't waste any more of your valuable time, right? All the very best, guys. I wish you guys all the very best of luck for your term to examinations. Rock it. Keep rocking it. Your life is yours. Uh, you know, do not, do not let it go in vain. Make sure you put in your hundred percent. You are spending so much of time. You are spending so much of money on your preparations. Let it be worth something. Give your hundred percent. Every time you take up your textbook, I keep saying this. Every time you take up your textbook, you should have only one thought in your mind. I am going to give my hundred percent today. And the every day you do it, you see some progress. And that progress is what is going to help you ace your term to examinations. Right. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until the next time we meet each other, this is Anup signing off for the day. Have a wonderful day ahead and I hope this helped you guys. Let me know in the comment section uh, about what is the type of sessions that you guys want from me in the next class. And that's the comment with the highest number of like, I will make sure I'll make a video of that either as a YT short or as a regular session. I'll basically be looking out for your suggestions as well because ultimately we want to help you guys to the maximum extent. And if this is something, this is a way for us to communicate with each other, then why not? So let me know in the comment section, whichever gets, whichever comment gets the most number of likes in this video, I'll be making a video of that in the next one, right? So catch you guys in the next one, people. Adios for now. Uh, take care. Arigato. Stay safe. Bye-bye.